What's up, Sneaky Nation? Sneaky B here, back with all the news after week 11 in year 2 of our San Francisco 49ers franchise, where the 49ers just picked up a clutch victory against the Seattle Seahawks. Let's check out some highlights. Mike Glennon getting the start today, challenging the defense early, and Richard Sherman had other plans. The one-handed interception. The Seahawks also going with a different quarterback. Johnny Manziel filling in for the injured Russell Wilson, and down the left side, that is Thomas Rawls. Then on third down and 11, Manziel going to connect with Doug Baldwin into the end zone. The Seahawks would strike first and go on top 7 to nothing over the 49ers. The 49ers though, would try to get back into the game on third down and 5. Glennon on the right side would find Chris Owusu and he would be gone. A 56-yard touchdown and we have a tie ball game 7-7. to -7. It's not often you see Richard Sherman out of position but it happened there and the 49ers would take advantage. On third down and 5, Manziel looking to throw. Pressure on the way he fumbles the ball. Demarcus Avery would recover Mike Morgan getting the sack and forcing the fumble. The 49ers would not make a touchdown. They'd pump the ball away and get the safety. Johnny Manziel trying to do a read option there. Not fooling Mike Morgan at all. So then with good field position, the 49ers on top. 9-7. to Shaquan Fryer down to the 11-yard line. 49ers have to settle for a field goal. And they will go on top. 12-7 to over the Seahawks here. The Seahawks, though, plenty of time left in half trying to make something happen on third down and 13. Plenty of time to work with, and Tyler Lockett would get open, then put the spin on the defense there down to the 28th. Then on second down and 9, a screenplay, and Thomas Rawls down the right side all the way to the 4-yard line. Then on first and goal, Doug Baldwin, his second touchdown of the day. The Seahawks would go on top 14-12, to but again, plenty of time to work with. A minute 41, here is Carlos Hyde on the outside. He would take it into Seattle territory, and then the 49ers would settle for a field goal to take the lead. 15 to 14 with 49 seconds to go, but the Seahawks still trying to make something happen before halftime here. They would get down in the field goal range and kick a field goal as time expired. 17 to 15 would be the score going into halftime with the Seahawks getting the ball to start the second half. And Jimmy Graham would make a play down the middle wide open. Seahawks kicking another field goal here. They would have a 20 the 15 lead little play action roll out Glennon on the right side going to find Chris Awusu that would set up this third down and nine Richard Sherman interception Mike Glennon not reading the play well at all Richard Sherman would get his second interception of the day and the Seahawks would uh, pump the ball away eventually so the 49ers back out onto the field here's Carlos Hyde on a screen play and he would take it up to the 37 yard line of Seahawk territory but on first and 10 Hyde bowling over some defenders down to the 13 yard line then on fourth and six the 49ers decide to go for it and Glennon with a panic throw will find Jeremy Lane in the end zone and he would take this to the house a huge momentum swing in this game the Seahawks with their third interception of the day they would go on top 27 to 15 in the fourth quarter and that is just a missed opportunity a bad read the 49ers decide to change things up and bring Cody Kessler into the game here's Carlos Hyde across midfield then on fourth down and five Willie Sneed would pick up the first then on third and two Cody Kessler Tired of the interceptions in the red zone. He would take it himself into the end zone. Touchdown for the 49ers. They are not out of it yet. The Seahawks would pump the ball away. The 49ers would come back out onto the field. And here is Willie Sneed again. Then on second down and 12 on the left side. Quentin Patton with the ball. He would take it and get pushed out of bounds at the two-yard line. From that point, Carlos Hyde is going to take it into the end zone. And the 49ers coming from behind in this one. They will capture the lead on the road in Seattle. Time for the Seahawks to still make something happen. The 49ers would go for two here to make it a three-point game. Kessler looking for the end zone and he finds Willie Sneed. So 30 to 27 is the score, 151 to work with. But as we saw at the end of the first half, that is plenty of time for the Seahawks. However, Manziel under fire. He is going down. Mike Morgan, his third sack of the day. Then on fourth and 16, down the field, the Seahawks last chance and Curse cannot bring it in. Plenty of 49ers in the range there, and the 49ers would get the victory. Next up, we have the Arizona Cardinals also in our division. They are currently 8-2 on the season, one of the best teams in the NFL. 
and it is going to be a very tough matchup. As you can see, we got our drills done already, so let's go ahead and get to some press questions. Oh yeah, Dancer123, are you looking to sign Marcus Gesser to a long-term contract this offseason? We absolutely are. We have been thrilled with the way Gesser has been playing. And by the way, I do change his number from 42 to 43. Thank you guys for correcting me on that. I didn't even notice until too late into the season, but it is changed now. But yes, we are loving what Mike Gesser is bringing to the table. We're liking him opposite Chantrell Wilkerson, and we definitely would like to get a deal done. The other question coming from Natani Shields, do you think the 49ers will make the playoffs this season? Well, currently sitting at six and four, things are are looking okay for us. As you see, the Cardinals are obviously eight and two. So, if the Cardinals do end up winning the division, at that point, we're competing for a wild card spot. If you look around the NFL, it's certainly possible that we are able to make this happen, but. This has got to be a team that steps up. You know, we have a lot of question marks at quarterback. We tried Kaepernick over the last few weeks. He really wasn't looking good. We tried Mike Glennon. Same thing. Three interceptions in that last game. Now we got Cody Kessler, a second-year pro, playing the Cardinals, who have one of the best defenses in the NFL. It's not a good matchup for us. If we fall down to 6-5, and five, it's going to be a difficult road to make the postseason, but it is still possible. It just kind of depends on the growth from this team and, and if they can step up or not. So that's going to be it for the press questions. Let's go ahead and check out all of the stats from around the NFL. The Texans would get the victory over the Titans 13 to 6. The Texans now 6 and 4 on the year. The Titans fall to 5 and 5. Texans went 5 and 11 last year, so sitting at 6 and 4 certainly improved. Of course, they weren't anticipating going 5 and 11 last year, but you're seeing a lot of their younger guys really start to step up. Osweiler's feeling a bit more comfortable there. Um, and it's working out for the Texans right now. A lot of teams within that division are struggling. We've seen the Jags have a lot of issues this season. We've seen the Colts have a lot of issues this season. So it's really a battle between the Texans and the Titans right now. It's going to be interesting to see what happens. But the Texans getting a win here today is certainly good for them. As you see, Jamon Stovall, a, a guy that we were very much targeting in the draft, ended up getting an interception in this one. Uh, and it led to the Texans win, or helped them out anyway. Next up, 31-24, to the Chiefs with the victory over the Cowboys. The Chiefs improved to 5-5 five and five on the year. Alex Smith having himself a great game. Dak Prescott back from injury, but the Cowboys fall to 4-6 and six on the year. They went 10-6 and six last year. Certainly not where they would like to be again. They've had a lot of injuries to both Romo and Prescott here, um, but to see them struggling and at a 4-6 and six record right now, it certainly wasn't anything we anticipated seeing this season. But, you know, it's just not happening for him. The, the Chiefs also dealt with uh, injuries to Alex Smith all season long. And then you saw Kevin Hogan start to feel more comfortable and start to play better. The Chiefs have actually been on a bit of a winning streak now and uh, certainly a threat to make the playoffs if they can keep it up. But the Broncos are looking very good in their division as well. 24-21, to the Lions with a victory over the Vikings. The Lions improved to 5-5 five and five on the year. Vikings falling to 4-6. and six. And these are two teams that went 12-4 and four and 11-5 and five last year. Neither team where they would like to be right now. The Lions are still at 500. And again, we talked about about it in the press questions about what are the 49ers chances of making the the postseason and wild cards a big factor into this so if the Lions are currently at five and five you know that's it's good sign for the 49ers right now um, because obviously both of those teams are currently behind the Packers so to see games like that to see these two teams struggling it kind of opens the door a bit more for the 49ers there as you see the Lions getting the victory though. 23 to 13, the Bengals with the victory over the Browns. The Bengals improved to four and six. The Browns now at two, seven and one. And Houston Church, 315 yards, one touchdown, no interceptions. We really have not seen him throw for a whole lot of touchdowns lately. Obviously he's very good at not turning the ball over a lot, but even though we're seeing a lot of yards, it's not translating into points. Uh, necessarily for the Browns right now. The Browns at 2-7-1, I, I don't know what happened. They were 9-6-1 last year. They ended up getting themselves a franchise quarterback, and now they're struggling a lot more. I don't know what happened. I don't think their defense is really stepping up in the same manner that it was last season for them, and that's been a big issue for them right now. The Bengals, of course, won the Super Bowl last year, just been struggling a lot this year, but now they're at 4-6 and six, trying to turn their season around. 35-7, to seven, the Steelers with a victory over the Colts. This is a battle of... Potentially the best team in the NFL and maybe the worst team in the NFL. The Steelers now at 8-2 and two on the year. The Colts at 1-9. and nine. And again, the injuries have been a big issue for the Colts this season. Andrew Luck went down with an injury early. But 
now that he's back, we're really not seeing a whole lot from Andrew Luck. The confidence of this team is down across the board. They are playing well below expectations, and this was an easy win for the Steelers. And again, Steelers currently looking like one of the best teams in the NFL. They are at 8-2 and two on the year. So they have the same record, I believe, as the Cardinals, both at 8-2. and two. These are the two teams to beat as of right now. We'll have to see what happens as the season progresses, though. Uh, next up, 21-14, to the Redskins with a victory over the Giants. The Redskins at 5-5 five and five on the year. The Giants currently at 3-7. and seven. And again, with the Cowboys only at 4-6, and six, you know, the Eagles have been losing a lot of games lately as well. We're talking about wild card spots and the chances that the 49ers can secure one of these wild card spots. And when you see, you know, teams at 5-5, five 4-6, and 3-7 five, and six, three and seven that are not winning the division, right now that's looking good for the 49ers. Obviously, the Redskins are right there. If the 49ers cannot beat the Cardinals next week and the Redskins end up getting a victory, tables are turned Im immediately again. Of course, the 49ers did play the Redskins already, and we played pretty well against them. So it'll be interesting to see what happens as the season progresses, but... Um, all these battles are, are something we're going to have to keep an eye on. 31-24, to 24, the Bears with an upset over the Saints here. The Bears now at 6-4 and four on the year. Jay Cutler having himself a great game. So, again, Whittington not playing, uh, which we kind of anticipated when Jay Cutler got healthy, but he was killing it. I don't know why they would bench him. Jay Cutler came back and got it done this week anyway. But the Bears at 6-4, and four, the Saints at 7-2-1, and one, only their second loss of the season. And, uh, you know, it shows how good this Bears team can be. They went 3-13 and last year. So to see them at 6-4 and right now and beating a team like the Saints, they've really made a lot of progression throughout a lot of their younger players, uh, bringing in the right players to help this team compete and win. And they even have a, a franchise quarterback in the wings learning behind Jay Cutler for better or for worse. 42-24, <laughs> 24, the Jets with the victory of the Bills. The Jets now at 4-6. and six. The Bills now at 4-6. and six. Neither team looking that good. Both teams actually were very good last year. Jets at 8-8, eight and eight, the Bills at 9-6-1. and one. But this season they've been struggling uh, and it's just not happening for them right now. As you can see, Jones going to have a rushing touchdown there for the Bills. Receiving the ball, Eric Decker, two touchdowns, 75 yards on eight catches for him. Brandon Marshall would get two touchdowns as well there. As we check out their defense, Pryor would lead the way in tackles. Sacks two for Allen Branch out of Michigan, still getting it done. Remember him being a high draft pick there. Revis and Burris would have the two interceptions. Burris out of NC State there. Fumbles forced. Washington would recover the only fumble of the day. 28-24. to The Panthers with the victory over the Bucs. The Panthers now at 6-3-1. The Bucs now at 5-5. Five five. So this has really been the division to step up their game a lot more. Every team in this division is at 5-5 five five or at 500 or better right now. So this is going to be our toughest path to the playoffs is beating the teams in the NFC South, having a better record than them right now. Because the Saints are at 7-2-1, Panthers at 6-3-1, Bucks at 5-5. Five five. We'll get to the Falcons here in a little bit, but definitely a good division. And, and I'm pretty sure one of the teams in this division is probably going to secure a wild card spot, which means there's one left throughout the NFC for the 49ers. And again, just going to have to see what happens. Plenty of time left before we make a call there. Next up, we have 29-19, the Eagles, with a victory over the Raiders. And this was a battle of two of the better teams. The Eagles have been on a big losing streak as of late, but this one might turn their season back around. They are at 6-4 and four on the year. The Raiders at 6-3-1. and one. The Raiders' defense has been phenomenal this season. So to see the Eagles get a win again might be a good thing. They started off 5-0. and oh. They ended up losing their next four games. They're getting a win here. Maybe they can turn it around and win five more in a row who knows we'll have to wait and see but getting a win against a very good Raiders team is certainly a good sign Alden Smith would lead the way in tackles not seeing Khalil Mack as much as we were earlier on in the year in terms of getting sacks we'll have to keep an eye on that but look at Alden Smith also getting two interceptions of the day and there's Tremaine Brock that we traded to the Philadelphia Eagles he got an interception helping that defense and helping them get a win there today 32 to 31 the Cardinals with a nail-biter victory over the Rams a division game there. Cardinals now at 8-2 and two on the year as we saw earlier in the video. The Rams at 5-5. Five and five. Goff throwing two interceptions and it looks like Carson Palmer went down with an injury. We are going to have to pay attention to that. 49ers got very lucky that Russell Wilson was out for the game against the Seahawks. That could be a big factor as to why the 49ers were able to win if Carson Palmer is out for the Cardinals. That, again, 49ers might be facing a lot of luck right now. We'll have to keep an eye on that injury. 
before we get into the next game, but that could be a very big blow again to a team that has the best record in the NFL tied with the Steelers anyway. So if they are missing their starting quarterback, that is a huge blow to the team and could completely turn their season around. Uh, Ogletree would force and recover a fumble. 31 to 21. The Patriots with a victory over the Broncos. The Patriots now at seven and three. The Broncos at six and four. James Vallejo, 402 yards, four touchdowns. He did throw three interceptions in this game, going up against a very good Broncos defense. It kind of makes a little bit of sense. Um, but again, Vallejo has shown the ability to throw the ball down the field, make some plays for this team, and the Patriots would once again get another victory. They only went ten and six last year. The Pan uh, Patriots are at seven and three now. So if they just go three and three the rest of the year, they've already tied their record from last season. I I think this Patriots team's probably good enough to continue getting wins so they might actually finish with a better record with James Vallejo than they did in Tom Brady's last season that's something to keep an eye on there it certainly looks like a very good draft pick though for the Patriots and a perfect successor to Tom Brady next up 28 to 23 the Packers with a victory over the Falcons the Packers now at seven and three on the year the Falcons at five and five so again we talked about the NFC South and none of their teams below 500 right now both of these teams went 10 and six last year the Falcons actually represented the NFC in the uh Super Bowl, so not where they would like to be at 5-5 five and five right now. And look at Eubanks. He has had himself a killer season. Nine catches, 113 yards, and a touchdown. He really has emerged as what seems to be the Falcons' number one option on offense there. Um, Julio Jones might be out with an injury. I don't think I saw him there. Vance McDonald's been playing very good for them as well. But interesting to see all these, these changes that they have going on because not doing as well as they did last season and maybe shocked some teams last year. But they are getting it done, or they're not getting it done this year, I meant to say. 24 to 20, the Chargers with a victory over the Jags. The Chargers now at 5 and 5 on the year. The Jags falling to 1 8 and 1. After going 9 and 7 last year, the Chargers, though, went 14 and 2 last year. This year, only 5 and 5. But again, a big reason why is their defense has been struggling. Look at Cleveland. He has been killing it. We saw him actually get his very first NFL touchdown against the 49ers defense, and he is still playing very, very good there for the Jags. Making plays out of the back field in the receiving game as well this guy might be a huge person to keep an eye on Kadarius Folston obviously their first round draft pick as well Jags have a bright future I don't know why they're struggling this year compared to last last year again nine and seven now one eight and one uh, with adding those players on offense you'd think they'd be doing better but it's just not translating to the, uh, for them right now Urschel gonna force two fumbles there he would not recover any though last game of the week 20 to 19, the Dolphins with a victory over the Ravens. The Dolphins now at 3-7. The Raven, Ravens at 3-6 and 1. Dolphins went 4 and 12 last year. The Ravens at 3 and 13. So a battle of two of the worst teams in the NFL last season, but they're doing better this year. They're they're making improvements. And as long as they're making improvements, they're on the right track. They're improving as a team. And, you know, if they're getting those players in place, they could be building a very good foundation for the future of both of these franchises here. Sacks, Judon with two and a half. Did I say that correctly? I don't know. Williams with two. Jones and Forbes with one. And, and Forbes is another guy we've been keeping an eye on. Having a great season there as a rookie for the Ravens. First round draft pick for him as well. Fumbles forced Alonzo and Bryant. Neither would be recovered. Players of the week. Cam Newton, 18 of 26, 181 yards. Three passing touchdowns and a rushing touchdown. Alden Smith, 12 tackles, two interceptions. Le'Veon Bell, 12 tackle or 12 carries. 127 yards. Two touchdowns and a receiving cut touchdown. And then Mike Morgan, seven tackles, three sacks, a fumble forced. He got a safety as well. 49ers getting represented by Mike Morgan, a great free agent signing for this team. As we check out the scouting reports, two top flight quarterbacks went head to head last week, and Kirkland Keaton came on top with a 27 to 21 victory. They don't tell me who the other quarterback is. I wish they did. Lawrence Grove looked dominant in uh, on the line, and the win needs to find a way to repeat weekly to improve his draft stock so we'll have to keep an eye on that and then Langley went out with surgery I think we saw that before Desmond Chapman Chapman said single game record interception with three 
Single game interception record with three. There we go. I can speak. I can say words from time to time. But we'll have to keep an eye on all these players. Obviously, we've already scouted a few of these. And for those that we have not scouted, we will. And here is one of them, Desmond Chapin. He just had three interceptions. Good hit power. Decent pursuit. His tackle's really not that great. I'm kind of shocked that he had three interceptions for Arizona. But I guess it depends on who they were playing. Steven Scassia. Scassia, did I say that right? Defensive tackle looks very solid. They're saying he doesn't grade out where he's projected to be drafted, but for a sixth round guy, I'm cool with those stats with that size, six foot six. Uh, and again, here's another guy. They're saying undrafted talent, but if I could nab this guy in the sixth or seventh round, looks like a solid nose tackle, has okay stats, nothing that stands out, but could be worse. And then once again, another good defensive tackle in the late rounds here, six foot six over 300 pounds. A prototype so definitely looks like he could be very strong or very quick I don't know which we'll have to keep an eye on his combine but looks very good Cassidy Revis six foot five linebacker looks very solid here in the fifth round a three four pass rusher perfect for what this team needs uh, another late round pick that that looks very good we've been looking for good late round picks we have not been finding them up until this draft session so seeing a few of these guys stand out is definitely good here's McLaughlin Graded as a third round talent, but seventh round is where his talent actually matches. So I don't know about that. And then look, Craig Lloyd, uh, a decent right tackle. I don't know if we're going to take a right tackle to, in the first round, but somebody worth keeping an eye on. And as you can see, Carson Palmer is not out with an injury. So despite him getting injured in the last game, he will return. That is not good news for the 49ers. Going up against one of the best teams in the NFL. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you all enjoyed. Hit that like button if you did. And I will see you guys in week 12 as the 49ers take on the Arizona Cardinals. Later.